Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPhone 5 and see how this particular phone holds up in 2024. Now, the thing I would definitely tell you is, is that for the most part, these particular iPhones really aren't worth buying at all, probably in any capacity. These types of devices make zero sense to go ahead and buy, and you're almost always better off purchasing phones that are you know, still supported with software. And the main problem with this particular device is that this phone hasn't been supported with software in like years now. So that makes zero sense to go and pick up a phone like this because this device, I mean, it just really isn't worth buying in any capacity. So like, why would you go ahead and buy a device like this when you can buy something that is still supported? And that's kind of the main thing that I'm basically going to be hitting on here that this phone is not really worth buying at all in any capacity at all. Now, so here's the thing with this particular device, what I'll tell you, the iPhone 5 on the exterior, first of all, has a four inch IPS LCD panel on it. Now, I do think it's a pretty good looking display. You know, I think it you know wasn't terrible at that time. And because this phone came out in 2012, you have to remember that this is like a pretty basic, you know, display. It definitely is not perfect. But I do think with it for the most part, like, you know, they could have definitely have done a worse job, I would say, at that time. This was coming off the heels of the 4S, and this was actually the first phone that we ever got bought from Apple that was basically giving us a bigger size, you know, display. So this was something that was actually very, very big and very huge at the time. And if I'm going through and if I'm going to go ahead and buy some sort of phone, I mean, I definitely would want a bigger sized iPhone. And this one was actually giving you that, which again, at that time was actually a pretty big deal. And that was something that was very awesome. So this type of device, another really cool thing going on here is that with the iPhone 5, you were getting an upgraded you know, system on the outside and an upgraded charging port, which we'll talk about in a second. But you were still getting the home button and the bezels around it. And that was kind of it on the exterior, at least on the front side, nothing else super crazy here. Now you were getting flat sides still on this type of iPhone, which was really nice. Having flat sides was really, really cool. And that was something I actually liked a lot about this particular device. On the bottom though, this is where you were getting that lightning port. Now, Lightning was a very big upgrade coming from the previous generation, which was that 30 pin connector. I will definitely tell you the Lightning connector was a massive, massive difference. And that was something that I actually liked a lot about this over the 30 pin connector. You have to remember with the Lightning port, the Lightning, you know, cord, this was a, you know, port that could do a lot more than just charge your, you know, iPhone. It can connect to different accessories. It could do a lot of different things. And that was something that was actually very cool about this particular device. So if I'm going through and if I'm buying some sort of new iPhone, I actually like the fact that this thing had a newer, you know, 30, uh, had a lightning port at the time, which is a very big upgrade coming from its previous port. So that in and of itself, once again, gets a thumbs up for me. And that was another really cool feature going on for this particular device as well. Now, on top of that, on the back side, you were also getting your flat back. So this time it wasn't a glass back. It was just a standard like back with like a glass shard at the top and bottom. And you were also getting your camera up there as well. So this was something that was actually very cool because you were essentially getting kind of like an upgraded camera system, which again was a very, very good camera. And that was something that I actually liked a lot about this particular lens was that you were able to go through and essentially get an upgraded camera system and an overall like a nicer looking back. Although I did kind of miss the you know full on glass back we were getting before. It was still very nice that we were getting that type of capability at that time on this particular device. So once again, that in and of itself was a very, very cool thing going on for this particular iPhone, which again was a very nice thing. Now beyond that on the outside, you were missing out on a lot of things that we have nowadays that this phone does not have. So this phone was missing out on IP certification. There was none of it here. There's no multi-camera setup. There's no wireless charging. There's no ProMotion display. There's a lot of things that are, there's no gestures on this phone. Like there's a lot of things missing on this phone that you probably expect on a phone nowadays. And there's no software updates really. I mean, you might get a security update if you're lucky, but even then that's very rare. You're really not going to be getting that on this type of device. So overall, I will tell you on the exterior, this is a pretty limited phone, you know, as you could probably expect, but that's kind of what's going to happen when you're on a device like this, when it comes down to it. So from that particular perspective on the exterior, that kind of covers it up here. Now, beyond that, another big thing is with the camera setup. So you have to remember that with this particular device, you are pretty much once again, getting a pretty limited version of a device. So this camera, I mean, you were getting a single camera setup on the backside, which was eight megapixels. And on the front, you were getting a 1.2 megapixel camera. So once again, as you'd probably expect, it is essentially a pretty limited camera. I mean, it, it wasn't really even, it, it was good when it first came out, but it is pretty limited when it kind of, you know, when you kind of consider it. And that is essentially the problem. 
you know, if you're wanting a phone that is a little bit better, this is not going to be that phone. This is going to be a phone that's going to be giving you a fairly limited version of camera. And the reason for this is because you're getting 1080p video. You're not even getting 4K anymore. You're not getting, I mean, you're getting, you're not getting a lot of things on this camera. It's like, where do I start with it? But back in 2012, when this phone first came out, it was a pretty decent device. So you have to kind of give it some slack there that for this phone at that moment, it was a, it was a limited experience, which is what you'd expect. So I think for that time and for that time being, it's kind of understandable. And I don't think it was really that big of a deal. But if I was going through and if I was getting some sort of phone, this is going to be kind of the issue I would probably argue with. So keep that in mind. Again, not the biggest deal in the world or anything, but I mean, for a you know, camera, if you're planning on buying this phone, this is kind of the issue that you're going to be kind of experiencing. So from that particular perspective, that kind of covers it up there. Now, on top of that, another big thing is with its software. As you probably suspected throughout this whole entire video, this phone pretty much isn't really getting software updates. It hasn't been getting software updates for a long, long time. And that is essentially the problem here. If you're getting some sort of, you know, device, you're going to be getting a limited version of a device on this particular phone, which is, like I said before, kind of the problem. If I'm going to go through and get some sort of phone, I mean, this is going to be a pretty limited, you know, software version phone with very few features inside of it. So keep that in mind. I'd hate for you to go and get a phone if it's going to be limited. So that's like another thing to keep in mind there too. Now, on top of that performance, this phone at that time was giving you a fairly, I mean, it was the best chips that they made at that time. So it's that Apple A6 chip inside with, you know, one gigabyte of RAM. So take that as you will. That is not a lot of RAM to have inside of a device nowadays. And that's a very old chipset to have inside of a phone nowadays as well. So when it comes down to it, once again, if you're going to go through and get some sort of phone, this is going to be a pretty limited phone in every single way from a performance sector. Now, if you really need to, you could probably make a lot of things work all across the board. Like if you wanted to, you could go ahead and like get, you know, maybe like some games to load on this thing or like that the biggest problem you're going to be experiencing really is pretty much whether games are going to be or applications are going to be able to be downloaded and installed or not. There's a very high likelihood where these types of games and applications and stuff just aren't really going to be installable, you know? There's a very high likelihood of that. And once again, I don't know if I would recommend a lot of people to go ahead and just like start purchasing these phones or start doing something like that if they're going to be experiencing these types of problems like that. So once again, I just would be better off if you just didn't do something like that. Just stay away from buying these types of older phones that are completely like, uh, you know, outdated with software. And that's kind of the best thing I'd recommend doing here. So what I can definitely tell you, and I kind of sum up this whole entire thing, I don't really think the iPhone 5 is worth buying in 2024 anymore. You are so much better off purchasing a device that is still supported with software. And these devices just really aren't supported with software anymore. And that is kind of the problem that you're getting here. Like if you're getting a phone like this, it's already going to be a very limited version and you're not really going to be giving yourself, you know, do justice, I would say. You are always better off purchasing a device that is still supported with software. So think of devices like the, you know, iPhone 10 R or above, or the, you know, 11 or above, like those types of devices are still worth it. And these types of phones, the, it just doesn't make any sense to buy. It's still kind of cool to look back on and kind of see the history of, but realistically speaking, it just doesn't make any sense to buy it. And I would highly recommend avoiding buying these types of devices when it comes down to it. So from that perspective, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.